Welcome friends. Today we are going to discuss about the earth interior. It's a very important topic of the geography, especially to understand about the uh, physical geography. Actually, it is not possible to know about the earth interior by direct observation because of the huge size and the changing nature of its internal composition. It is clear. It is almost impossible to know about the direct to know about the earth interior by direct observation. And it is also impossible for the human to reach till the center. Center of the earth. Because the earth radius is around 6370 km. By mining, by drilling, and by other operation we have been able to observe the earth interior directly only up to the few kilometers and the reason behind this is because there is a very rapid increase in temperature below the earth's surface uh, rapid increase in temperature as well as rapid increase in the pressure although it is impossible to go beyond the earth uh, interior but still if we know about the earth interior there are some direct and indirect sources that gave us a fair idea about how earth interiors look like in this video we will discuss about the earth interior as i said that scientists have a fair idea how earth interiors look like the basis behind that is there are two type of evidences one is direct evidences and another is indirect evidences direct evidences and indirect evidences look what are the direct evidences for example rocks rocks from the inside of the earth gives absolute clues about the earth structure geologists have drilled holes as much as 12 km deep in the earth the drills bring up sample of rocks that can be used to make inferences and the condition about the deep inside. Another than this, volcanic eruptions also provide us the information about the earth. As we know that all volcanic and earthquake activities occurred in the lithosphere up to the 100 km from the depth of the earth. So these volcanic rocks also provide us the knowledge about interior of the earth but the major uh, sources to know about the interior of earth are indirect sources indirect sources are like gravitation force magnetic sources and uh, like uh, by analyzing the rate of change of temperature and pressure from the surface towards the interior as we know that if there is change in the pressure or there is a uh, change in the temperature so we can conclude that uh, there may be the difference of the material there are two type of sources direct sources and indirect sources in direct sources there are rocks and volcanic eruptions and for indirect sources gravitational force magnetic uh, force seismic waves meteors and various we will discuss each of them from various data or various structure we collected about the earth we collected information about the earth interior in the very outer surface is a crust beneath crust there is mantle and the most inner part is known as the inner core it actually we can divide earth into three parts crust mantle and core part all these layers are change are having different composition different temperature and different as we move 20 meters below the earth's surface the rock begins get warmer for every 40 meter that you descend from the point that rises in the one degree celsius temperature the rapid rise of temperature continues for several tens of kilometer and continues to grow hotter, hotter the high temperature inside the earth are the result of the heat left over from the formation of the planet. 
to look as we discussed that about every 20 meter there is an there is change in the temperature a rise in the temperature with rise in the depth is observed in mine and deep wells also the evidence of volcanoes of molten lava also supports this but there is uh, one important point uh, which i am going to discuss that in very upper 100 km the increase in temperature is about 12 degree celsius per kilometer like for first 100 km the rate of temperature is the rate of change of temperature is 12 degree celsius per kilometer for next 300 it is 20 degree celsius per kilometer but if we going further deep the rate reduces to mere 10 degree celsius per kilometer means it is assumed that rate of increase of temperature beneath the surface is decreasing towards the center right uh, please do not confuse the rate of increase of temperature with increase of temperature there is a difference temperature is always increasing from the earth surface towards center but the rate of increase of temperature is not always increasing right the temperature at the center is estimated to lie somewhere about 3000 degree celsius to the 5000 degree celsius even a high temperature also the material at the center of earth in solid state because of the heavy look as uh, we move descend into the earth interior the amount of the pressure also increases the pressure results from the force pressing on an area just like temperature pressure is also increasing from the surface towards the center of the earth absolutely clear that it is due to the huge weight of over like overlying material and rocks it is estimated that in the deeper portion the pressure is high which will be nearly to three to four million times more than the pressure of atmosphere at sea level right it is around three to four million times more than at high temperature the material beneath will melt towards the center part of the earth due to heavy pressure this molten material acquire the properties of solid and probably in a plastic state discuss about the each and every layer the very upper layer of earth is known as the crust it is the outermost solid part of the earth normally normally it is 8 to 40 kilometer uh, thick nearly 1% of earth volume and 0.5% of the earth mass are made of crust please don't confuse between volume and mass look nearly 1% of earth volume and 0.5% of the earth mass are made of the crust the thickness of the crust under the oceanic means below the oceans and continental areas are different uh, as discussed the thickness of crust under the oceanic and continental areas are different as it is clear that uh, oceanic crust are thinner oceanic crust are thinner this is the crust oceanic crust are thinner while continental crust are thicker average of oceanic crust is a 5 kilometer while the average of the continental crust are 30 kilometers major constituents element of crust are silica and aluminium thus it is often termed sial sometimes sial is used to refer the crust or uh, to refer lithosphere the discontinuity between the hydrosphere and crust hydrosphere means the ocean water and the crust is known as conrad discontinuity right uh, look the discontinuity between crust upper crust or lower crust we can divide the crust into two part upper crust and lower crust is known as a conrad disc oceanic crust is mostly of uh, mostly of rocks such as basalt basalt is rock uh, basalt is a dark rock with fine texture we move the about continental crust continental crust that form continents consist mainly of rocks such as granite granite is a rock of usually in light color as you can see here the granite like oceanic crust is made of basaltic rock while continental crust is 
of uh, granite rocks the mantle just interior the crust the portion is known as mantle the discontinuity means from where the mantle starts and crust ends known as moho discontinuity the mantle is about 29 kilometers in thickness or from the uh, from the surface uh, earth surface to the 2900 km depth nearly 84% of the earth volume and the 67% of the earth mass mass is occupied by the mantle as we discussed that 1% of earth volume and 0.5% of earth mass are made of crust while 84% of the earth volume and 61% of the earth mass is occupied by mantle in crust there is some major elements like silica and aluminum so we know crust as a cl similarly in mantle there is some major elements like silicon and magnesium so this is also known as a sima the uppermost solid part of mantle and lower part of the crust con constitute lithosphere look the uppermost part of mantle and crust together form a rigid layer known as a lithosphere all natural activities takes place in lithosphere what is asthenosphere below the lithosphere means uh, the upper part of crust sorry upper lower part of crust and upper part of mantle up to some extent formed lithosphere right below the lithosphere there is a layer which is hotter and under increasing pressure the that that part is known as a asthenosphere all volcanic activities and earthquake activities takes place in the lithosphere and the lower part of lithosphere is asthenosphere asthenosphere means weak a weak zone in greek asthen means weak although this layer is softer than the rest of the mantle it is in solid state solid below the asthenosphere the mantle is solid the solid metal solid material extends all the way to the earth core beneath the mantle is earth core the core is made of the mostly of metals like iron and nickel it consists two part outer core and inner core the core is separated from the mantle by gutenberg discontinuity here it is composed mainly of iron and nickel so it is also called knife n i f e n i stands for nickel f e for iron the core consists of two sub layers inner core and the outer core inner core and outer core the inner core is in solid state while outer core is in a liquid or semi liquid the discontinuity between upper core and lower core is also called lehman discontinuity further you can download the related notes from the description box